Have you ever wanted your world to have a VIP entrance or a private mode where you only let one player play the game or even a group play, but you don't let new people join? Well, today's video is right up your alley. The first thing I wanna let people know though, is if you go to your menu and you go to the information icon, you can start new session by hitting the ellipses icon. That is a great way to do this if a world doesn't have this option. And if you're looking to implement it, it's very simple. So here's our VIP entrance. This only lets people with a certain name through the door. This one is a one person only entrance, so I can enter, but until I exit, nobody else can enter. And then when I exit, it resets it and respawns me back to the beginning. Our group start is also very similar, where it spawns you in, but you have to hit the lock button when you get to the other side, but you can also unlock it if you wanna let new players in. So you can lock it, and now once it's locked, can't get through, if I come through and unlock it, I can go right back through, and then the exit works the same as before. The simplest method is almost identical to our two-line response script with one variation. We're using an if statement to check who the player is, and if that player matches the name of the player we've given it, then we let them through. So the first thing we're gonna do is drop in an if statement under our trigger enter, and then we get the name of this player, which can be found under the operators tab, and you just need to scroll down about seven times. There we go, so you can get name of player. And then we use an equal sign to check it against the string, and the string is found Found under values tab you scroll down one time there is the string input and so we typed in my name here and then I used an or statement which is at the top of the operators tab and if you use or you can check multiple players so we've checked that it's either lakes or Merck and if it's one of us then we'll be allowed to go through you could even have like eight of these if statements checking a huge VIP list and then we simply respawn that player on the spawn point and then our spawn point is an object variable from here, you can see that we've tagged in the script and we've referenced the spawn point on the other side. To get back through, you could use this exact same script, but I'd recommend using a regular respawn script so that way if someone somehow glitches into your VIP area, they have an exit. Now our one player script might look daunting, but I promise you it is very straightforward. The first thing we need to know is our variables. So we have our spawn point, we have a Boolean, which is a true or false variable. So we started at false because there's no one inside and the moment they enter, we set it to be true. We have a reset trigger. So that's a trigger we're linking up to. And we have our start spawn point. So it's another object we're linking up to. When the world is started, we use the connect to event, which can be found at the bottom of your events tab. So it's called connect to event. And we put in our reset trigger. So that's the exit trigger over there and we get the trigger enter event and we connect it to our local event reset. And on our local event reset, you'll note that we have to use this plus button to bring in a player ID and then I've labeled it PLID. So that way when I use it, that's what it's called. And then when we have trigger enter with player on our main trigger, so this is all running off the green trigger, we then say if not player inside. And so if you go to your operators tab at the top, you'll notice there's a not statement. And the not says if there's not a player inside, we set player inside to be true because now there will be. And then we respond that player on the spawn point on the other side of the door. When they get to the red exit button, we send event reset with the player ID and we set player inside to be false. And we respond the player on the start spawn point and I wanted to note that there's an alternative way to do this, which is the alternate reset. And so this is where you reset the world state. It's important that you don't wanna reset the world state until you have respawned the player back to the beginning, otherwise they'll be stuck inside. It is important to note that having full control of when the Boolean is changed and when the players respawn can be very valuable. But if you're making an escape room, the reset world state might be your best friend. On our object, you can see that the one player script has been attached. We've referenced in both spawn points as well as the reset trigger. Now now group start rocked my brain for a minute because I was going to do this a really complicated way but I want to make this as accessible as possible so I decided to use two additional triggers so a lock and unlock trigger which allow you to set that boolean from the other side of the door and this is the easiest way to do this I know Habiter has a really cool method where he has everybody standing on triggers and that's another great way but today we're gonna to do it the most simple, which is having this trigger allow people to teleport through until someone hits the lock button on the other side. With our variables, you'll see they're all the same except for we've added a lock trigger and an unlock trigger. Those triggers have also been connected to, so we connect to the lock trigger on trigger enter for lock door, and we connect unlock trigger to trigger enter for unlock door. And so those are events here at the bottom, and they do both come with player IDs, otherwise they would not come through, and they simply set the Boolean player inside to be true or false. 
The only other difference in this script is we removed the Boolean being set here in the if statement because it's now only happening in lock door and unlock door buttons. And then again on the object, you can see group start has been attached. We've referenced in the spawn points as well as all the triggers. These doors are incredible. And while they do solve a lot of issues with trolling and they can make games that were designed to only be one player, really easy to set up but I highly recommend finding ways to make your games more inclusive. To me, this means having a viewing area or instructions on how to start a new session, because if you're gonna use this, it's important to tell players how they can get into their own session. For instance, you hit the menu button, you go to the worlds, you hit in the eye icon, then you hit the three dot icon and then you click start new session. That's a lot of steps, especially for someone who might be new to Horizon. Please be sure to include those if you're gonna be using this setup and have fun. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And again, if you want a copy of this, please don't hesitate to ask. I'd be happy to add you as a collaborator so you can just import these scripts and use them right away. Welcoming on the show for the first time ever, give it a round of applause for Habiter. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. And we will uh, gladly take audience questions today. So I'm gonna pass this through. Habiter, we have you here today talking about private sessions in escape rooms. Do you wanna just start us off? Tell us a little bit about what you do. I make uh, escape rooms uh, primarily in Horizon. So what uh, for me, I don't like puzzles to be ruined. So what I do is I created an airlock room is what I call it, that essentially once the game has started, it locks further players from joining the game. So my rooms are limited to four players. They're able to select how many players are in their group. Then they can jump onto the teleporter pads and they'll be teleported into the game. That's awesome. And I'm pretty sure everyone here has actually been to your World No Escape 2. It's really popular. Yep, yeah, yeah, <laughs> there it is. And so one of the things I, I noticed when I went to No Escape 2 is there wasn't really anything to do inside of your kind of like closed off block. Is there any like plans in your future to improve that, maybe make a viewing area? What's your thoughts on that? Well, again, the primary uh, reason for having it is I, I don't want uh the puzzles to be ruined so i there are no plans for a viewing area because i want people to create a new session or wait um you know i, I have a no escape 2 there's a timer that counts down uh to let them know when the game is going to reset uh but in my new room that i'm working on right now uh john who's actually in the audience here uh put together some costumes for me so to create that separation of what is part of the puzzle and what isn't, I'm actually going to place the costumes in the main opening room so people can get dressed up for their adventure before they jump into the escape room. That is awesome. That's really cool. And I think adding little things you can do in those little kind of closed off areas is going to be really important, especially for considering inclusivity and maybe having a sign that says, if you want to start at your own session, here's how to do it, like press a button. And so I think that's something we should all consider. Absolutely. That's, that's uh, the instructions on how to open a new session is a feature that is going to be implemented in my uh, next room as well. Airlock. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to go take a quick look at your airlock. Why don't you take us, walk us through what we're looking at here? Sure. So we have a pretty simple layout. I didn't want this to be too complicated, but essentially we have a uh, player select here. So right now you can see that we're waiting for players and there are four teleporter pads down there. Uh, if we were to select uh, one player and I were to come down here, it would light up and start counting down. If I were to come up here and select two players, when I now go to be on the teleporter, it tells me I'm waiting for players until a second player jumps awesome. on. And then once this counts down to zero, it will send us away. You'll see it starts a countdown timer. Game in progress, reset at 15 minutes. This is something that I designed uh, kind of earlier on in my scripting journey. So it's definitely not quite as sleek as I think one yeah. I would design now. Let's just talk maybe in general about how it's happening and then let people be able to break it down for themselves. Um, because as you said, you yeah. know, it's kind of an early on project, so people, you know, maybe want to experiment with themselves and see what methods they find. And so looking sure, here, yeah. what I'm seeing is we have four triggers. These four triggers are counting to see if there's a player there. We have four yeah, yeah. buttons, and each of these buttons is going to say, well, this is how many players we need. 
And then after the players have been selected, a countdown goes through, counts down 10 seconds. You have a loop event counting 10, 9, 8, until you hit zero. And then when you hit zero, this big trigger gets enabled, which teleports your players through. And then you disable all of the triggers until the 15 minute timer's up and it resets. Does that sound about right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's accurate. So that uh, basically is how it works. I mean, what this does up here is it sets a uh, number of, it basically sets two variables, number of players and number of players selected. And if those equal each other, then that's what allows the countdown to start uh, before jumping in. And then anyone, technically anyone within this trigger, this is something I would probably fix, but anyone within this big trigger is going to be teleported into the game, hmm. uh, which of course is also disabled uh, at, the, at the end. This is awesome. I mean, the only difference I would make is have each of these triggers store the player ID. So that would be how you trigger you know, players teleporting. But other than that, I mean, you're doing a great job. The recoloring is spot on. The sound effects are fabulous. I would also suggest teleporting these sound effects around so that way you only need one of them, not four. And uh, I mean, ah. but other than that, you've really done a marvelous job. I mean, when you showed this to me, I was blown away. We're now gonna transition back to the studio and get some kind of impromptu questions from the audience for Habiter about escape rooms or his kind of closed off areas. I was just wondering, Habiter, when you are starting design on say a brand new escape room, what do you have any tips or things that you do to get say inspired or ideas when you're looking at a blank plate yeah great question typically two directions uh that i've come at it so far you know direction one is theme for the current room i'm working on i i was really excited about a dungeon theme and that's what i wanted to do so i kind of started designing the nights first uh in there and kind of explored from there. I, I, I do go ahead and draw out and plan out my puzzles and the general idea of the room. But my first draft of that, which is on paper, generally doesn't look anything like what the finished product is. Uh, the second approach is uh, I'll have like a keystone puzzle that I really want to implement in my first escape room, which is terrible. Don't, don't go there. But in my first no escape, um, the idea that I had was based off of a puzzle, you know, that, that I had implemented in my Dungeons and Dragons games in the past. Uh, and that was kind of the concept that I built the puzzle around was the idea of the ceiling that is slowly dropping that you can reset, but it adds that sort of idea of pressure. And that, that's kind of the feeling that I was going for. I don't think it was, I implemented it very well, but, but that's kind of, um, what my inspiration was for that world. Awesome. Thank you for that very good answer. And if oh, you don't you. know Habiter very well, he actually does escape rooms in the real world, which is incredible. So it comes right on over into his virtual worlds. They're an absolute blast to play. Uh, yes, I was uh, just curious what made you choose uh, escape rooms uh, to begin with as something to, something to do in Horizon. Sure. Well, um... You know, like uh, like like Alex said, I actually used to work at an escape room. Um, sadly, not, did not have the opportunity to design them, but it, it was still a lot of fun. Uh, but for here, I, I remember I wanted to do for when I first jumped into Horizon, I made like you know a kind of like a, a fantasy tavern to try and um, as like a hangout world to try and get used to the materials, and then. You know, like I was saying uh, to, to Murcott, I kind of had that idea of the room that was collapsing and I really wanted to implement that in a fun way and make it into a game, but I didn't, wasn't very good at scripting. So for me, it was an opportunity to get better at scripting in such a way, you know, using, using kind of a device that, that made it easier for me. I knew what my end goal was and I knew it was possible. Um, so at first it was just practice for scripting, but the more that I, you know, once I finished that room and I started actually exploring other worlds in Horizon, I went to Waffles Worlds, I went to, you know, a few other uh, puzzle worlds. I realized that as a platform for escape rooms, you know, Horizon has an incredible ceiling of potential. 
Horizon, you know, there are a ton of great shooters in Horizon. You know, Zap Zap, for example, uh, Gun Game is great, but they're never going to be better than, you know, AAA video game uh, first person shooters because the, they just, they, uh, maybe they can, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong in that, but I think that the amount of resources and, and for what you're trying to do with that, you know, Horizon isn't the ceiling for that. There is a ceiling. But for escape rooms, you know, puzzles and stuff like that, it's very much less limited to uh, gun mechanics or, you know, it's it's very much what can you come up with? What can you imagine? How creative you can be? And so to me, I mean, that's really where Horizon is going to shine. There are, you know, you think about games like Myst, you think about games like, um, you know, The Room and everything that those games do, you can do in Horizon. Uh and more so there you know horizon's lit ceiling is so high simply because you can have an unlimited amount of room i mean you could link a million rooms together to make you know the world's greatest you know largest escape room if you really wanted to and um you know i, I just think that that's something that a lot of other genres can't accomplish i mean i know the mini game challenge is happening that's another great example of a genre that I think is really going to shine in Horizon simply because of the massive amount of content you can generate. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Really a pleasure having you, Habiter. And then we'll wrap up the show. So you guys look forward to seeing it online. But thank you again so much for joining us. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye.